Welcome to the First Baptist Church of St. Paul. Today is, we will be celebrating Father's Day, June 16th, 2024. A couple of announcements that I'd like to make. Tuesday at 10 a.m. there will be a Bible study in English. And, and on Monday night, Monday night, June 17th, will be trustees at 5.30. Wednesday, the office will be closed June 19th for the June, Juneteenth holiday. Upcoming events include a hymn sing here at the church on Sunday, June 30th during the regular worship hour. And Judson Sunday will be Sunday, July 14th at 10.30. And that will be at the pavilion at Phelan Park. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On this Father's Day, remind us that in you, we are all family. You are our Heavenly Father, and you have loved us in ways no earthly parent could, and have shown us what fatherly love can truly be. We thank you, God, for all the loving fathers and stepfathers, uncles, brothers, teachers, and mentors all those Christian men who have shown your love to us. May we all reflect your image in the ways we love our children and in how we love one another, knowing that our worldly families are not perfect, but your love is. Amen.
Holy God, we come this day to listen to your word. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. We will never understand how your kingdom comes, but we recognize its fruit. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. We see it in the unexpected places and in unexpected ways. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. May your kingdom come, Lord, in us and in your world. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Come among us, living Lord, for we have come to hear your living word. We meet here together in your name, to share in your mission, to share in your sacrifice. Good Shepherd, lead us, guide us, show us your love and your way, that we may receive the power which only you can give, that we may have the life that you intend for us. Come fill us, and in this time of worship, may we know hope, peace, and joy. Forgive us when we have strayed from the paths of right living, when we have intentionally and unintentionally departed from your way, from your truth, and your life. As we confess our sins before you and seek your forgiveness, may we rediscover your love and presence. Hear our silent prayers of confession. Thank you for the gift of starting over. Lord, when, we for, when you forgive us our sins, and you are faithful and just as we confess our sins before you. We pray for ongoing strength and protection for Lakwe Tu, for Benjamin Hong, Rosalind Yo, who's our Tu, La Gay. Lord, we pray for the Donazel family with the passing of Lushane this past week. We pray for Jonathan, Toon Myung, Pina True, Maggie Porter, Oscar White, Terry Kappel, T. Ashwi, Lage. We pray for Dave and Jerry Johnson's daughter, Cara. We pray for the church in this time of transition. May we know your power and your grace and your peace alongside us. We pray for the civil war in Burma and for the war in Palestine and Israel. We pray for the members of the people in Gaza. We pray for Haiti and for the chaos that's there and for violence and fighting in Africa. Lord, we would offer ourselves to you as servants and know the power of your grace and your love. For it is you from whom our strength comes. It is from you that we have and breathe and live our lives. Thank you, Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline your ear to us and grant us your forgiveness and your peace. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear.
Our scripture today is from the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so continue to live in him. Keep your roots deep in him and have your lives built on him. Be strong in the faith just as you were taught and always be thankful. Amen. I wasn't supposed to go to camp with the kids this year, but God had other plans. I didn't think I needed to go to camp. After all, we had four wonderful young adult leaders going, Diana and Eya, Johnny and Edo. They could have easily done this all on their own. I didn't think I needed to be there, but God knew what I needed better than I did. Up to the last minute, I questioned it. I asked myself why I was going all the way to Colorado for just a few days of camp. So far to go. But God knew why. Because once I was there and settled in, I can't tell you how many times I offered up a prayer to God saying, thank you for bringing me here. I thanked God as I ate my breakfast in the fresh, clean air, looking out at a mountain. And I thanked God when I said my morning prayers that first day with five deer who were grazing right by where I sat. I thanked God when I had the experience of having a hummingbird come and drink sugar water out of a container in my outstretched hand. And I thanked God when we drove up to the summit in Rocky Mountain National Park and were all just overwhelmed by the beauty of God's creation over and over again. But there was so much more than just connection to God through nature. I thanked God for all the connections I got to make with people, for conversations, singing and laughing with the youth, for conversations with other pastors and partners in American Baptist ministries, sharing about our lives and our work. I thank God for the small group that I had the pleasure of leading every day and the deep sharing that we were able to have both in our class time and outside of it. I thank God for how God was able to use me to help a couple of young women who were struggling in their lives. And I thank God when a relationship in my own life was able to be healed. And there were tears and forgiveness and a new beginning. I thank God for the amazing speakers we had and how night after night in worship we heard messages that just helped us to hear about the good news of God for us. I thank God the night that the worship band played rec Reckless Love, and our youth just sang with their whole hearts and voices about the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I thanked God on the last night of camp at the talent show, when our youth did such an amazing job singing the song Waymaker singing, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, this is who you are. This is who you are. And I think that's what I'm most grateful for, that in bringing us all to camp, God was being a way maker, making a way for us when 
We maybe had felt like we had lost our way a little, being a light in the darkness, reminding us that we are rooted in God's love and goodness in a time when we were feeling a little uprooted. Because that was the theme for camp, rooted in the word. And with a logo, with a, a tree, with green leaves and branches reaching up to the sky and a root system reaching down into the earth. With all that's happened in our church for the last month or so, our youth have been feeling a little uprooted. We all have been feeling a little uprooted. And it was as if God had chosen this theme just for us to remind us what we should be rooted in and how being rooted in God, in Jesus, <clears throat> and in God's word keeps us strong in difficult times. And each day at camp we had theme scriptures and these scriptures rooted us in the word and they talked about being rooted. Our first scripture on day one was from Psalm 1. Happy are those who don't listen to the wicked, who don't go where sinners go, who don't do what evil people do. They love the Lord's teaching and they think about those teachings day and night. They are strong, like a tree planted by streams of water. The tree produces fruit in season and its leaves don't die. Everything they do will succeed. And the second scripture for the day was the parable of the sower about the sower who sowed seeds, the word of God, in all kinds of soil. And sometimes the seeds didn't grow, either, be either because the word wasn't understood or it didn't go deep. And then when troubles came, it washed away. Or there were thorns, like worries, that came and crowded the word out. But in good soil, the roots went deep, and the word was able to grow and flourish. And as strange as it seems, there was something about thinking about these two scriptures side by side that made me think about Gooseberry Falls. If you've never been there, Gooseberry Falls is a place in northern Minnesota with these beautiful series of little waterfalls that you can actually walk across. And it's a beautiful place, and when I go there, I usually focus my attention on the beauty of the falls. But the last time I was there, I kept noticing the trees that were growing close to the falls. Trees planted by the water. And because of the way that they were situated and how things have shifted over time, you can actually see so much of the root system, the part that's usually underground. And these root systems are gorgeous. They are strong and secure, and they're intertwined with each other. The trees aren't just rooted in the ground. They are connected to each other. And it's these two things combined that helps to make them so strong. Being rooted in God makes us strong, but being connected to each other makes us even stronger. But I noticed something else about those trees, too. They weren't necessarily planted in the best soil. Some of them were definitely in rocky ground. It doesn't seem like these trees should have been able to grow there at all. But there they are, deeply rooted and connected. 
And sometimes I think we forget that we worship a God who is a way maker, a miracle worker, our creator who can make a way to soften the hard ground of our hearts, to clear away those worries and fears and distractions that try to crowd out the word and the work of God in our lives. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. God can restore our roots when we're feeling uprooted. And God can transform us with God's love. Now on day two of camp, our theme scripture was from the Gospel of John, where Jesus tells the followers, I am the vine and you are the branches. And it was a reminder that it is only in staying connected with Jesus that we can truly have life. And it is only through that connection to Jesus that we can produce fruit. In my small group, we talked about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. And we thought about which of these fruits we needed to have more of in our lives. And then we thought about which of these fruits we needed to see more of in the world. And we realized that these things come from being connected in Jesus, to being rooted in him who gives us life, true life. And then we came to day three of camp. And on that day, the first theme scripture felt a little different than the others. There was no talk about roots or vines or being planted, but rather it was about family. It was the scripture where Jesus' family comes to get him because they're worried about him. And Jesus says, who is my mother? Who is my brothers? And then he looked at the people around him and said, look, here are my brothers, my mother. Anyone who does God's will is my brother, and my sister, and my mother. I asked the youth in my small group what they thought an ideal family would be like. And some of their answers were that they would share with each other. They would trust each other. They would listen. They would be there for you and they would love you and accept you for who you were. And suddenly I understood why the scripture was chosen. Because this is what it means to be rooted in God's love and goodness. It means recognizing that we are a child of God, our Heavenly Father. A Father we can share with. A father we can trust, a father who listens to us and will never leave us and accepts us for who we are. Our earthly families may let us down. Our church families may let us down. But as children of God, we will always know that we are loved unconditionally. And that as children of our Heavenly Father, we should do the same for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We won't be perfect, but we don't have to be perfect, because God is. And then our final theme scripture on that last day of camp was the same scripture we read this morning. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And it seems to just perfectly bring everything together. 
as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so continue to live in him. Keep your roots deep in him and have your lives built on him. Be strong in the faith, just as you were taught, and always be thankful. I didn't know why I needed to go to camp, but God knew. God knew that I needed to hear this message of being rooted, and that I needed to share that message of rootedness with you. We may be shaken, we may feel uprooted, but the good news of God's word has been placed in the soil of our hearts, so we may grow and flourish. God is our Father, and we are God's children. Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. So we will continue to live in him. We will keep our roots deep in him and build our lives on him. We will be strong in faith and always thank thankful to God who keeps us rooted in God's love and goodness. Amen. Now, go in peace. Go out to know that you are rooted in the love and goodness of God. Amen.